One of the most iconic military vehicles of the Second World War has to be the Sherman tank. This historic vehicle has been immortalised in history as being a victorious tank associated with the Allies. However, its reputation is a rather interesting one. For some, it's a brilliant machine, however for others, it's a rather poor tank. In fact, the British even have a nickname for it, the Tommy Cooker, due to its propensity for exploding and bursting into flames after being hit. In this video, we look at the M4 Sherman and come to a conclusion as to whether it was a good tank or not. Remember to support the channel, please make sure to subscribe. The M4 Sherman when compared with other medium tanks of the Second World War was quite good. With a crew of 5, the Sherman weighed between 30 to 40 tonnes based on its variant. It was 19 feet 4 inches long and 9 feet high. It had a range of 100 miles and a single 75mm turret gun plus a 7.52mm machine gun with a 50 calibre machine gun on the turret. It was generally quite a reliable tank and also was very easy to maintain. An example of this was replacing the transmission of a Sherman. All that needed to happen was to disconnect it from the drive shaft in the interior of the tank and remove the row of bolts on all four sides of the cover. So if there was an issue with the Sherman, it was easy to fix and replace parts. When you compare this ease of maintenance with the German tanks, replacing a transmission on a Panzer IV for example required the turret to be completely removed using a crane, and this isn't something you'd find lying around in the Normandy Bocage. During 1942, till the end of the war, the US would go on to build almost 50,000 Sherman tanks. The speed they could fly off the assembly line was a huge positive. These tanks were then deployed by many different Allied forces, including the United Kingdom, the Free French forces, Poland and even the Soviet Union. So a lot of armies depended on the American factories to keep making Shermans. A positive of this was the factories were immune to any bombing threat purely so were based in the US. The same couldn't be said about Panzer factories found in German towns. In fact the Sherman was even used in Paraguay in 2016. Much like the Soviet T-34, the biggest strength of the Sherman was strength in numbers and the amount of tanks rather than the quality. Also the Sherman itself was rather narrow and compact, allowing easy transport on ships and by rail, so it was easy to transport them to the front line. Its road speed was around 30 miles per hour and it could enter a ford 3 feet deep but also cross a trench which was over 7 feet wide. Also the fact that the Sherman could be modified in so many different ways was a huge plus, meaning that different guns, armour and so on could be added very easily. The sturdy chassis of the tank allowed this to happen and even following the Second World War there were lots of modifications made to Sherman tanks. However, as mentioned before, the Sherman had a rather unfortunate nickname and reputation. The nickname Ronson was a negative one given to the tanks, named after a cigarette lighter, as apparently it lights up every time, however this nickname has been challenged. Fuel fires in the Sherman occasionally occurred and were less common and less deadly than an ammunition fire on board a Sherman. The reputation of the tank being known as a tommy cooker would come after they had a propensity to burst into flames following a hit from an enemy shell. This legacy would live in infamy for the Sherman. However, another negative point was the gun on board. Originally, its 75mm cannon, a low velocity gun, was placed on the tank, with the designers feeling that it would last longer than a high velocity gun. However, most Shermans wouldn't last long enough to wear out their gun barrels. Later models would see an upgraded gun, for example the British Sherman Firefly. These guns were better matches against the armour of a Tiger tank or a Panther. Regularly though, Shermans would be routinely knocked out by the superior German tanks. The 88mm gun on a Tiger would blow the Sherman to bits. The Sherman's gun was capable of dealing with infantry, but not in dealing with more superior tanks. The armour on board a Sherman was also rather weak and a Panzer's main gun could obliterate it. Before D-Day, the US Army constructed the Sherman Jumbo, which was up-armoured at the front and could take a direct hit from a German gun. The Easy 8 series, released after D-Day, also had tougher armour than the original Shermans. The height of the Sherman would also be a weakness, as during the hedgerow combat in the Normandy Bocage, the Sherman stood out as a far more visible target because of its height. 
Compare this with a Hetzar that could be concealed easily, and a Sherman would stand very little chance when spotted. In rough terrain, such as snow or mud, the Sherman's narrow tracks would also provide poor ground pressure, causing a few issues in mobility. Overall, the Sherman tank did its job. During the time in which the Germans were losing their foothold in France, the sheer number of Shermans available would have helped to defeat the enemy. In this sense, a comparison can be drawn with the T-34. The greatest strength of this vehicle was the sheer speed of mass production and how quickly it could get out from the factories onto the battlefield. This is similar with the Sherman. Although its reputation of creating a burning inferno when hit, it was reliable in other aspects and also the fact it could be tweaked to create a more superior variant like the Firefly made it a pretty decent tank. We hope you've enjoyed this video. To support the channel, please make sure to subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching.